Okay, we are back with part two of today's stream. My internet just totally died. I had to reboot my router and it takes quite a, quite a number of minutes to get that baby rebooted. So here we are back, part two of today's stream. Hopefully only part two of two. Uh, so to recap, what we've already been working on is um, we've got one desync solved. We've got players loaded up, playing together for up to like 600 to 1300 ticks. And then all of a sudden we get this weird desync where very key determined where this is coming from. The position of one player is slightly different than another. And um, so I started logging out AI components into all the state parator stuff. And we found that basically we didn't have the right player that was kind of controlling which entities are being created in the world. So one player was creating a bow and a boomerang on the ground for the ability for this floor of the dungeon and uh the other player only had the boomerang so what we need to do is wait for both players to be connected uh before we create the world in this killer debug sense where we're just launching straight into a match kind of a thing it's called a, an auto join match and in, in the real world this never this never will happen but still I'm gonna get this right so that it starts off two clients, creates the world correctly, even in this case. So maybe that will be something that actually happens in the real world world later, we'll see. But so what I'm doing here is I'm writing a little bit of code, but then we get this message called on message join reply from the server. And that tells us when another player joins. So we need to wait um, to create the world until both players have joined. So what we need to do is check the uh, message join reply dot players dot size greater than one. Actually, we needs to be settings get in clients. And this bit of code is debug only, debug only. Okay, we're gonna run it with this code. And essentially what this should do is when we get a join reply, it's gonna skip creating the world. If we are A, enabled the skip menu, B, we have net is multiplayer, and C, we have, oh no, sorry, this needs to be less than. So if the number of players in our join reply is less than the number of clients that we're trying to boot up in debug mode, uh, then we uh, skip creating the world till later when we get the join reply with both the players. Okay, this is great because I thought this would be much, much co more complex to create this kind of code. In fact, it could be, it could be, we could be dealing with a whole bunch of issues trying to enable this bit of code, but let's hope that we don't have any issues. Let's just run this. You know what I'm saying? All right, we got one player. Did not be creating a world yet. I don't know if it is or not. Oh, yeah, they're kind of like restarted. It's loading. Server timeout. Got a timeout. So it was it was waiting too long, essentially. Which one of the timeouts was that? The, the, the one time on the other timeout. There's the auto join timeout. There's the set tick timeout. Oh, we can just look in the log, probably. Timeout did we get there? World will timeout after five seconds. Will timeout. Okay. Ignoring time. Let's just, let's guess. Set tick tock. Yo, I like your streams. What's up? Pikachu right back at you. Is that Pikachu? I don't know my Pokemon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What's up, man? Uh, how about we just change them both? Change both of these to 15. What could go wrong? Pro joint. Uh, whatever. I'm not going to investigate this too much. So we should get one client load up and then wait really nicely until the other client. Yep. Oh, there, there we go. Okay. Okay. I like this. I like this. Let's check out our logs. We got... Uh, um, 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 yeah, there we go. Vim one, cam two, creep archers, and item two items, and a creep thief. And then this guy, hopefully, the exact same thing. Come on, be the exact same thing. Vim one, cam two. Oh, this is off to a really good start. I'm liking this. Oh my god, I think it's correct. Holy buckles, holy yellow mustard bottles at the end of a rainbow. Oh. oh. This is so sweet. Oh my God. I thought that would be so much harder to make that happen. Ha <laughs> ha. Weep. All right. Okay. All right. So let me fill you in on what we've been doing here. We've been working on desyncs. We got two clients running and um, we're trying to get these clients to say in absolute perfect sync down to every single bit of memory. If even one bit of memory is different, everything will go to hell. Now that's not necessarily true, but what sometimes just a single bit can cause a butterfly effect that causes things to really go haywire. Okay. So, um, let's, uh, um, let's run up, let's run up here to the bow and boomerang. Let's just make sure that we got both of those on the ground. Both clients. Yep. Okay. There we, yep. Okay. Good. All right. I knew that. It's good. Okay. And maybe we'll, um, some gold on the ground. Uh-oh. Our gold is not on the ground for one of the clients. What happened there? We've got some gold on the ground. Okay. For this client, but not for the, for the other one. Oh, well. So we got to desync somewhere. Let's figure out, um, what happened with that state. So we're going to. 
I go to here, turn on the thing to me, play Mac 3. So turn on compare mode. So we got these two files dumped out a whole bunch of state data for that just that run right there. Right as we move those two characters, we're going to be going through and comparing tick by tick every single bit we could possibly think to compare find out where the difference happened and then dump out the log file about what the difference was this we got all the way to what 700 took 723 yes this is great ah uh, but we still have the same desync problem okay this is to be expected <gasps> what's this though this time we have a collision grid box is different oh okay that's some new information all right so this is kind of what we've been trying to track down this whole stream here is this thing we got a position that's slightly different sometimes the y is a little different sometimes the x sometimes both but we haven't ever been getting any other information that really helps this last ground pause is another piece of information but it doesn't really affect things because it's really based on the position.pause what we're trying to find here is some other information which would tell us what would possibly be causing this position dot pause to be slightly different for one client versus the other client this time we have something here collision dot grid box oh the collision grid box is based on the position too which makes me wonder why it wasn't being an issue before player distance covered is also kind of a result of um position being slightly different okay but i must say this is a really big step in the right direction we essentially since i started the stream we started off not even checking ai components we went into int and we started enabling ai components to be hashed and i'm trying to go to that function to show you but uh, where the hell is it i don't know we also went in here to tick entities and um enabled saving state data and hash data and all that kind of stuff for all ai components that have a move component so that includes players as well as ai like creeps and enemies so we got a lot more stuff being dumped out to these two state files and well look at that just for that run right there we we're at 100 megabytes 100 yeah that's 100 wow the each in here there we go 99 megs 100 megs i got 99 megs and my desync is one okay so we can don't probably would comment this one out okay so to wrap things up basically we have we have this elusive desync issue trying to think of how to catch this we're just suddenly arriving at tick 723 and at tick 722 our clients were in perfect sync their move components were exactly the same their position components their collision components their vectors their velocities everything was exactly the same and then when we get to tick 723 all of a sudden the position is slightly different even though the move component as far as its velocity and input and all that kind of stuff everything was the same what could be causing this one client likes to add different yes. you are are you are actually you are on to something there is a thing called you can actually have floating point math acts differently on different platforms so that can actually be a thing right where one client adds differently but in this case that's probably not the issue because we're running on the same machine we're running the same floating point hardware everything and also, I've designed this whole game from the ground up to not use floating points. So even though you were seeing some what looks like floating point math right here, like it looks like the players at position 601.3, that's actually 601,300 in the game's math. It's actually using integer math, just divide by a thousand. So, so that's not that's not actually the case. This, if you were to, if we were to zoom in on this and look at the integers right there, um, we would see that they're actually the integers are different. It's not it's not floating point math. So it can't be that it's adding correctly. It has to be that player's position. The the only way the player's position actually changes is from the move system right let's just go to move tick move entity am i correct in assuming that pretty sure this is the only place that could actually change the player's move or the change the player's position position we we, we need some more context we need to understand like what what was going on in the move components what happened the last tick hmm browse through the move system a little bit more on boots tick probably going to be here in tick movement oh my god it could have something to do with obstacle warping that causes a teleport find open space teleport then it would have a move teleport source teleport desk it's got a move component hash these are all being hashed right tell yeah yeah here's hashing the teleport source the teleport desk so if one client were causing a teleport and the other client didn't cause the teleport we would see that show up in the move component that's a what's a, once again we were looking at this output and we don't see anything critical being changed in the move component it's only in the position sure, grid boxes 
dependent on the position. But I am curious why it didn't show up until just now. Huh. Go back, go back to where we were and move entity. Obstacle war probably ticked movement. Player had movement, triggers stuff, sets the last grounded pause. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so it had to have been after call tick movement. What would, what would help is if we could look at this, um, wait a second, we can look at, hold on, we can 723, you can go to tick 723. Yeah, we're not getting much data. Let's um, comment this out. I got an idea. Okay, here's how we could possibly solve this in line. Item get collision dot item that here. So we can comment this whole thing out. There we go. Okay, so that's gonna allow us a little more breathing room in this log file. What I wanna see in this log file is like, okay, right at the tick that this is happening, what was going on in the move system possibly caused that? And and pretty sure that it's going to be in tick movement. Oh, we do actually have a lot of this data in those log files. I'm trying to figure out what kind of log statements could we actually put in here that would be helpful. Oh, movement factor. Oh, this is kind of interesting. Movement factor and the movement variable itself are not being tracked in the move component. So this would not be reflected in the state data that we're being dumped out. So this might be it. We could be, we could put a log statement in here for this movement variable and the movement factor. That would be a start. Everything else like blink desk, teleport desk. Hold on, is movement? Okay, that's a const, that's a const. Okay, so at this point in the function right here, create a little log statement and log Log out movement and it would be the same as before it called move entity x y and z so we're gonna say send s for the name of the character uh, uh, is move has move meant percent s and move factor percent point three f we need to log out the tick we need to log out the entity's name we need to log out the entity's id the movement and the move factor it's movement factor not move we might want to log out some of these other variables like gravity z friction is transitioning and is levitating maybe even old heading the old heading used for for using the shield uh we're not using the shield any okay it's probably not that see let's do some of those gravity what was the other thing friction chin transitioning levitating so gravity dot f no, that's gravity friction is transitioning is levitating so now we've got a better picture of all the sort of variables that are not being tracked within components oh i think it's gravity z yeah gravity z Okay, so hey, if you just joined the stream, I'm trying to track down a pretty elusive desync bug here where one client is moving slightly different than another at an arbitrary tick, but it seems to happen fairly consistently, at least within the first 30 seconds of up and running and moving a character around. This desync will happen sometime during those 30 seconds. So I'm just gonna move, oops, dang, we had to pause there. That's gonna cause a desync. Okay, we gotta, we gotta make sure it doesn't say paused. That's gonna be an issue for another day. We gotta focus on the issues that are in front of our face right now. Damn it, that went unpaused again. Oh, look, what's going on here? Huh, I wonder why kernel task is using 10% kernel task doing right now. Why do, you, why do you need to be using extra CPU right now, kernel task? Thanks for all the details. So long, and thanks for all the fish. Okay, we can't can't actually detect any desyncs accurately if it pauses, so hopefully it doesn't pause. Please don't pause. We might have to turn the input delay up. That could work. Oh, good. We didn't. All right. That time we didn't pause. Okay. Oh, I bound a race. Bound a race there. All right. Well, we probably desync by now. Let's just click the clients. Okay. We need to make a backup of log dot log Mac. Okay. Now let's run the desync checker. We've got this backup of the log file for L0. So we can look at like uh, what this goes all the way to tick 2000. All right. We, this should be plenty. Let's run this. So what'll happen is we'll get the desync, hopefully, and we'll see what tick the desync is happening at. And then hopefully we can compare these log statements and figure out what might have been the issue by these variables that uh, are not being tracked in state data. Damn it, recorded components are different? Oh, that's not the desync we were hoping for. Damn it. Bye. It might have been that I was hitting those pillars and... Okay, this is uh, this is another desync for sure, but maybe I'll, co maybe I'll copy the log Mac to L. Desync recorded compile text and... Copy scene zero to scene. Oops, I want that to be build client two. 
Cool. And same command. Okay, there I got the backup of those scene files. Okay, so we backed up that. We'll hopefully find that desync another time. Okay, this time I should I should try and run the clients, make sure they don't pause, and simply just move around. Don't try and hit the walls. Don't try and cause gold to appear and all that. Could be could be what's happening there. Like it was maybe created a gold entity with a different id than the other machine. I don't know. So we just move around for a while. Both clients. Oh, I remember one of the clients did bind a wraith and the other client didn't. Maybe that's what was going wrong last time. Okay, we I can see that we already have a desync because if you look at the right screen, Vim has moved farther than the one on the left. So okay, we cl we can close now. Hopefully we have this a uh, bug this time. We're back in playback mode three. We copy log back first L zero and then we got this there. We're ready to try this. You go playback mode three. Run it. Hopefully we get this desync again. You if you're watching the stream you can probably figure out how tediously difficult it is to create multiplayer games. This is just one method of what writing multiplayer games. This is a technique called lockstep, which has certain benefits. Okay. Yes, we got it. We got the issue. We got the issue we were looking for. Oh, nice. All right. Yeah. I lurk your streams. Exactly. It's hard to get right. This is where, you know, you could spend, you could spend a whole day just working on one kind of bug like this, this word where you're like, why is the position slightly different on this client versus that client? Okay. So we get this issue with tick 463 so let's see what's happening at tick 463 both of these clients all right look at this at 463 cam 2 had some movement we were moving cam cam which was i think the left green the left client <laughs> okay it might have been 462 as well so we'll check those kind of like put it at 462 oh my god this is it this is it we found it oh this is huge check this out so for some reason the left side screen had zero movement right here oh and it also had a move factor that's 0.01 so that means that so the player's movement variable gets multiplied by the movement factor. So it, it seems to me that the issue is that this guy had a movement factor of 0 0.01, which pretty much disabled movement for this character um, for these two tick. And on this screen, for tick, we're, we're looking at ticks 463 and 464. So here we go, tick 463, 464. The other one's like, nope, for sure. Keep walking, man. Okay, so the, wow. Oh my God, this is really, really awesome. I can't believe what that we just found this. All right, so move factor, pretty much the issue. Movement factor could be 0.4 there. Da, 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 da. What's this right here? This is what could cause it. Oh my God, it is. It is based on the render component. Wow. Okay, so this whole this whole time I was under the assumption that the render component was not affecting gameplay, but here's a, here's a shiny example that the render component does affect gameplay because it affects how how fast a player can run. Every player has this slight, oh my God, I know exactly how this happened too. Because one of the players moved off screen, it wasn't updating their render component anymore. So they weren't running through their run animation or anything like that. So this is an obvious desync right here. This is basically just slowing. This is a this is a really well. I learned your streams well in the way they did that differently. They did. You're right. In a way they did. Okay. So check it out. We could probably just if zero this this bit of code right now. But this is a pretty neat piece of code to actually have in there. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna find a way to make this happen without relying on a render component. Hopefully, because what this is doing is. Whenever the player's foot hits the ground, it slows down their movement very, very slightly. And then when the move, when their foot leaves the ground, it it lets them move back in normal speed. So what that does is it gives you an it's it's totally almost imperceptible, but it's more of a feel as a player. You're like, you can almost feel when your foot hits the ground. Um, it's a really neat thing to have in there. It's a really nice game feel thing, but obviously it's causing multiplayer desync. So we need to figure out how to do this the right way. So what we can do now is go back and do the same test. Hopefully now we don't have this desync. And this is a, uh, wow, wow. We just found a really difficult to find desync right there. I'm very proud. All right, so we're gonna move. Um, see, this is kind of like when that would have happened. Cam is now off the screen for the other player for Vim. And so anything that's happening in this guy's render component might not be being updated for the other player. So that's why we would have caused that desync. Okay, it looks like we might be in sync again. Yes, I lurk your streams. You are completely correct about that. The longer they're off screen, the longer there is, there's more potential there is for them to be out of sync. Um, because as you saw, there were two ticks when 
that one bit of code was running for the other one and the other one was not running the same code for those two ticks. So as lo the longer they're off the screen, the more it has those two ticks that sort of diverge, diverge a little more, diverge a little more. But now we should, we should have them, they should be in sync technically. So let's see what happened. We just ran it for quite a while there. That was a lot more than tick 2000, I think. We'll go back into playback mode three to compare and oops. Oh, we need to copy the bet log file first. I think we, I think we did it in time. Cool. Ah, let's see if we get this fixed now. No, oh, okay. It just took a while. I was like, what's going on? I was comparing for a long time. Yeah, good. It looks like we had a different desync that time. We made it all the way to tick 1500 and we didn't have the position bug. Wait. No, we did. We did have a position bug, damn it. But we have a lot more information this time. We have some AI indices that are off. Entity is actually the one that's off. Oh, uh, we got another one of those recorded component bugs too. So we need to figure out what's issue there. But okay, so yeah, this is now a different issue. It's not the player's position in this other issue we're seeing here. This is for entity 3344, which is not a player. That's one of the, maybe one of the creeps. Check it out, their move headings off. Off, their move rotation is off so these are these are much easier to catch desyncs than that other one that other one was like what the hell's going on because there's no other data pointing to what could be wrong this one has some data that is pointing to me what what could be wrong so this should be easier to find but the biggest part about running this that time was that we did not have that same desync from this move system so this is a bit of code i need to take a look at and figure out how to have that same game feel but without having a potential decent so i need to really think about how to do this one correctly i'm gonna what i like to do for bugs for for issues like this sometimes i like to just uh take a break come back to it later with a fresh mind in fact that's probably what i'm gonna do i got a rock climbing i'm gonna do some some of that tonight so i'll probably have some ideas probably on the way to rock climbing and probably on the way back i'll be thinking about it and be like oh yeah we can do that we can do that so a good thing to do would be to kind of think a little bit more about this other desync that we're seeing here too this one with the move heading and the entity 33 etc and these recorded components oh that's for the, that's also for tick for entity 3343 let's see if we have entity 3343 in here we need to go to tick uh 1561 okay we, we are not getting it i didn't record any data for what entity that was fortunately oh we could oh oh here's something we could do um it's at a breakpoint where it's cert fail. Oh, it's just going to cert fail. Okay, just command for that. Okay, we're going to run this in debug mode. And this will have all the data for the entity that's that's crashing. And we can look and see what entities, what the entity's name is. Is, and that will help a lot like what's what what really helped me understand things here is what entity that was it was this the was this one of the creeps was it a piece of gold was it the bow item who knows and we're also going to get some breakpoints on the other desync where it's where it's failing with the recorded component that it can't match up so that's probably going to be oh, here's the first one okay it's chains okay let's look at this first one consider what could be possibly happening here we're reading back entities from this one of the streams which stream are we looking that vi oh it's the second stream okay so that's client two the right side client we're, we're looking at we're reading back its data and oh okay i see exactly what's happening here this is basically saying that it read back this read back the left side client's data and it did not find this id whatever this whatever who is this v in 3346 different entity than the other issue but anyways it found this entity on one screen but didn't find this entity on the other screen so that's a big big desync issue could cause all sorts of problems with with one 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 client is creating a whole entity it is not even there on a different client. So figure that out. So, okay, we got that. We kind of understand what's going on there. Basically, it's asserting right here. It's supposed to be saying, hey, I should have found this id in my ids already because it should have been in in the first stream but it's not in this and it's not in the first stream it's only in the second stream so let's continue on we'll go to the next assertion failure this might be the same one. Oh no it's data is one and data is two four is that the same entity let's see oh no this is our other entity the 3343 entity oh it's not even finding state data for one of these okay this could also be related to the other thing you're putting bets on the bow huh interesting interesting putting bets on the bow yeah like what if you can if you just kind of think back on your memory like what happened during that that little tiny run there we didn't 
Did we cause any gold to put on the ground? I don't even remember. 3343. So let me just try and understand what's happening in this situation. We have, we should be having datas one and datas two. Yeah, yeah, it's totally, you're right. It was just creeps or the bow. Oh, okay, here's our issue. We loaded data for, for this entity from one of the stream files, but not the other one. Oh, so, so earlier we saw entity 3346. And now we're seeing entity 3343. Is that right again? View. Yeah, this one's 3343. So what this could be is that um, it created an entity for both of the clients, right? They both created an entity, but on one client, it, that entity number was 3346. And on the other client, it was 3343. That could have caused all, literally all of these desync issues. Let's, th let's take a, let's consider that. Oops, we don't have that all logged out right now. Okay, well, let's just keep running it then. The next one, yeah, it was recorded components not found for comparison between, for entity 3340. 33, 43. These are probably all going to be same thing. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'm not even going to check these anymore. If they're the same one there, we're going to get to a point where it actually pairs. There we go. Okay. All right. So this one, we are comparing the same entity. What entity are we pairing? Go keep going backwards until we get in. There it is. This is entity 33, 44. Well, yet another entity enters the mix. I really think this could be just ordering. It might have created like some creeps and just created them in a slightly different order or maybe an and oh, it could be particles. Oh my gosh, I got a, oh, I got an idea how that we could find this issue in the future a lot easier. Um, if I just log out whenever an entity number is being created, or in fact, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna add this to my little list of things to do. So um, desync with it's being different could be that particles are created on one client but not another so basically we need some kind of like tracking system that says every single tick we're already logging out all of the entities that have ai components but we're not logging out all sorts of other seemingly unimportant entities like particles so if particles go off on one screen and it creates an entity like so let's say it creates entity 3343 on one machine but not another then when an, an important entity gets created on the other machine it won't have the exact same entity number and that could cause these this whole state comparator to not be comparing correctly so that's kind of a kind of a decent issue it, yeah it really is it's a it's a big decent issue so that's a another a yet another way that the render system technically the render system could be causing desync so i've got a note about that Let's continue exploring these desyncs see if there's anything else i can kind of put in my brain to kind of mull over as i'm going rock climbing tonight so we're state what are we comparing here oh we're comparing position components okay yeah that's right there was a position component desync oh uh, oh yeah okay obviously obviously if it's creating entities out of order all anything could be wrong and it's not like comparing these things is going to help right we're We've got the, we can clearly see that uh, the, these values are mismatched. The position pause is not the same for these two entities, but look how different they are. This one's, this one's at X 1024 and this one's at X 960. That's way different. That's like one entity is in a totally different position. That That's also confirming this is probably uh, an issue where it's creating and like creeps I'm thinking are being created out of order. Like when it, when one of the clients went up there and we encountered three enemies, they, all these three enemies warped in at once. Um, if the entity numbering was off, then this whole issue would have happened. Even though the entities were technically the same entities on both screens, um, they just had different entity numbers. And that's gonna cause all sorts of these issues like this position pause being different. Let's just see what else we're gonna get though. Last pause, of course, is gonna be different. That's the overall component hash. The move heading, yep. Yeah, that's another thing too. So um, creeps, when they get spawned in, they warp in, they, they assign a random heading, right? So they're like one entity will face Northwest, another entity will face Southeast and uh, that we would see that too if we're getting a completely different move heading it's not like these move headings are similar these are totally different so that implies also that we are looking at different entities i'm i'm guessing that this is, has to do with entity ordering same thing with rotation and last rotation those are all dependent on the heading the grid box of course is going to be different if the position is different the ai index that's another really really clear indicator that we are dealing with a different entity right 
the AI index is uh, for if, you, if you're creating, say, let's say you're creating three of the exact same type, type of AI, which is what we saw there. We created three of those little creepy guys that sneak up on you and they and they fight you a certain way. Those creeps um, all were the same exact type of creep. So it assigns an AI index for them. One of them will be, the first one will be zero. The next one will be one. The next one will be two. So here we're seeing AI index is one instead of zero. That's really clear indicator that these entities pr pretty much probably got created out of order. Same thing with the original pause. Okay, I don't need, I don't think I even need it just anymore. Okay, this is really good. Okay, we're gonna wrap things up now. We had a, re this is a phenomenally good stream. Let's run the, run the clients one more time and just kind of celebrate. We got, um, we solved a whole bunch of desyncs. All right, I solved a bunch of desyncs in the last few days that got the clients able to start off and get to like tick 100, um, always in sync. And then we solved two pretty big things on today's stream. Um, one of them was getting one of these clients to wait until the other client joined in order to create all of its world. And what that did is it made it so that on on both screens, we have the same items on the ground because what was happening was this right side client thought, hey, I'm only I'm the only player here. I'm gonna go ahead and create both of these items on the ground, the bow and the boomerang, because my player might want to pick up either of those. But when this client joined, this client, see, he already has a bow, he can fire the bow and he's already got that item. So if this client were the one in charge, it would have said, it would have created the world without the bow on the ground. Cause it's like, you already have the bow. I'm not gonna give you the bow again. So what we needed to do was first of all, set it so that one of the players was the one that's responsible for what what item gets created on the ground and that was solved part of the problem but then we also needed to get it so that players were starting were creating their world at exactly this once they had already had both the players join so we need to wait for both players to join or we create all the entities um so that all of our entity numbers are all of our entity id numbers are all in the same order and everything is really off on the right track so that got us to the point where we could attack this really crazy bug that i had no idea if i would even be able to solve on this stream but thankfully we did it so there was this issue where um where the player's position was slightly different on one screen and it all turned out to be due to this little bit of code in the move system which was dependent on the render system of all of all things and it was basically causing the player to pause slightly when their foot was down and then when the foot gets off the ground, it stops pausing them. And it, what that does is it adds a really cool feel to the game. You've got this sort of like cadence to your walk. And, uh, but that was dependent on the move system. So if one player, or sorry, the render system. So if one player moved off the screen, it would stop being the render system for that player. And then therefore it would affect the player's movement. So that was a that was a tricky thing to catch. And what the only way to catch it was to basically log out all of the variables in this kind of critical function here called movement that had nothing to do with move component. So we've got this variable called gravity, friction, movement factor, and movement. All of these are just temporary variables that don't get tracked, that don't get saved into all that state data. So it was like impossible to find without creating a log statement. So we created this little log statement that showed all those variables. And that's how we found that bug. That was a tricky one. Freaking super success there. So person, a man, we went through some good stuff on today's stream. It was a two part stream today. My internet died in the middle of the stream. So if you're just joining the second half, hi. Um, but there was the first half as well. So um, yeah, this is a multi-part stream today. Um, but uh, yeah, so what we're working on here is multiplayer for the game Wraith Binder. The next beta that you'll be able to play this will be July 14th. And if you want to get in on this and play out, play the online co-op, give me your feedback. The next time you can play this is going to be July 14th through the 25th. And um, all you got to do is go to the Steam page, click request access, and it will instantly be in your game, in your, in your, uh, you'll sort of own it, the demo already but it won't be until July 14th that it will be playable in your library. So essentially you'll, you'll be added to the beta. You'll get on the list by requesting access, but you won't actually be able to play the game 
until I enable it on July 14th. So that's what we're working for. This this is all all this multiplayer streaming and all this work about desyncs is all so we can have a nice experience playing this game together, or you can have the, a nice experience playing this game with your friends uh, for this next beta. And of course, for when the game comes out eventually too. So yeah, that's it for today's stream. I'll be back next Wednesday, same time, streaming more multiplayer, I'm sure. So thanks for watching the stream and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for all your chats and uh, uh, and all your support players appreciate you later